Hey, Brad here in the Banger Hangar for another episode of Overkill Reviews where we review two metal albums every week. But if reviews aren't your bag, I don't know why they wouldn't be, but if they're not, Shredders of Metal is happening now. It's like our guitar shred off competition. It's like American Idol if it wasn't stupid. And as always, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You can give as little as a dollar a month and it helps us immensely to keep this thing going and even potentially grow. We've got a podcast on there with a lot of cool episodes. I even interviewed Chase Mason from Gate Creeper and Spirit Adrift with Blaine. So check it out. This week I'm reviewing arguably the only band who you will know exactly who it is if I just tell you the number of members. Invariably, you already have an opinion on this band. I know I did, but you gotta go in with an open mind. So yep, it's the new album by Nails called We Are Not Your Kind out now on Roadrunner Records. I'm just kidding about Nails, it's actually Slipknot, but goddamn, does that sound like a Nails album title. Slipknot formed in 1995 and exploded onto the scene with their 1999 self-titled debut. They really blew up with their feral take on new metal, that, which then quickly started incorporating more elements of like modern or the new wave of American heavy metal on 2001's Iowa, and went for a little bit more radio-friendly, hard rock style vibes on 2004's Volume 3, the Subliminal Verses. Oh yeah, and they're also known for, you know, having a few guys in the band who like smack trash cans and uh, wearing masks. Speaking of, trash can artiste Dick Nose is out and they got a new guy named Tortilla Man, which makes the transition of members a lot less significant than on 2014's Point five, The Great Chapter, on which they introduced new bassist Alessandro Venturella and new drummer Jay Weinberg. That being said, it's been a while since that polarizing release, five years to be exact. So let's check out album number six, by the nine. Nice. Few frontmen are as good as talking as Corey Taylor is, and he did a lot of talking coming up on the release of this album. At one point he claimed that it's Iowa levels of heavy, which is saying a lot for fans of the band, but then he kind of backtracked on that and said that what he meant is that it's Iowa plus volume three, and then he threw some more fuel on the fire by saying that it's actually their best since Volume 3. I'll talk about whether I think it's their best since Volume 3 a little bit later, but for now, I'll address those other two claims. It's not as heavy as Iowa, though it gets damn close sometimes, but it does retain another key element of that album, the experimentation, which is all over this thing. As far as the comparisons to Volume 3, yeah, they still are going a little bit for, for radio play with some of these huge anthemic courses. Honestly, at the end of this, I'm just hoping that as the meme goes, Corey Taylor weighs in and tells you what he thinks on what I think. In terms of heavy songs, Orphan is absolutely sick. There's even some like fast industrial beats sprinkled throughout, and then a riff that's like staccato and palm muted and brings to mind decapitated and suffocation. No, uh, yeah, for real, I'm, I'm not making that up. Red Flag approximates new metal's predecessor, groove metal, more than its hip hop centric follow up, though Corey does spit with a little bit of rhythmic rapping throughout. Speaking of, the chorus of Nero Forte juxtaposes this small choir with this same kind of percussive flow, though Corey's rapid release and the crescendoing tones of his voice make him sound that much more furious. As I referenced earlier, the experimental side is heard throughout this album. One gets the feeling that DJ Sid Wilson, sampler Craig Jones, and percussionist Clown had their hands in the making of this album a little bit more. It's no surprise with Clown, considering he had to deal with the passing of one of his daughters and no doubt needed an outlet. Creepy soundscapes pervade throughout as interludes. The song Death Because of Death serves more as a tone setting piece than a song proper. And this dedication to the, the album as a whole, to the, the piece's overall flow, feels a lot different than their last slightly jumbled effort. The experimentation is also the difference in a song like Critical Darling and its course becoming too stone sour or just slip not enough, which it is via these like haunting howls in the background. It's slightly Halloween-y in a not cheesy way. Songs like Not Long For This World, Solway Firth, and A Liar's Funeral really encapsulate what Corey meant when he said Iowa plus volume three, pulling influences from just heavier hard rock, metalcore, and like sludge metal, respectively. 
As usual, Slipknot managed to find a way to take a familiar trope and make it exciting again, as they do on Unsainted. They take their typical rhythmic stomp, again, accented by auxiliary percussion, and they add this choir element in the chorus. That being said, sometimes Slipknot fly a little too close to the sun when referencing past efforts. So on Unsainted, at almost any moment, I feel like I'm about to false start into singing if you're 555, then I'm 666, because it's so similar in feel. And the choir gets a little bit annoying by the end of the song. Though that 555-666 line has become kind of a mantra for the band and their fans, one can't help but think about how objectively silly it is and that if it wasn't this big song, people would just kind of laugh about it. And once again, Slipknot, unfortunately, stick their foot in their mouth in what would otherwise be a standout moment on this album. They tend to do this at least once or twice every release. Their last album featured a lovely but still slugging tribute to late bassist Paul Gray, which was marred by the decision to call him a crazy motherfucker, which just feels uh, a little juvenile. This time around, the unfortunate decision was not via a lyric, it was more via the delivery of one. I already talked about Soul Away Firth and how it's a standard on the album. In fact, when Sam Dunn heard that song, he stole this album away from me and was gonna review it. And now I got it back, so eh, you're stuck with me. Unfortunately, though the song does rip, the opening Delivery of lyrics just takes it quickly from solemn to silly when he goes, they're counting all the killers. And what's the other line? They mutter as the body loses warmth. Something like that. I don't know, man. It's just, it takes you out. And otherwise the song fucking rips after that. But yeah, just a poor stylistic decision. Actually, that's kind of a recurring problem with these uh, spooky soundscapes in that they often do just devolve into just Silly spooky, you know, like Scooby-Doo noises instead of like a scary movie. My Pain is an example of this. Unfortunately, it sounds a little bit like it was recorded on a Fisher-Price xylophone and included on the album just so that they could say, this is our most diverse album yet. Spiders splits the difference and comes across as both silly and spooky, kind of like its namesake. Spiders are kind of goofy in that they have eight legs and walk around funny and then they have webs that come out of their butthole. I know that it's not actually their butthole, okay? I'm not a fucking idiot. Um, but for some reason, a lot of people are really scared of them. I wasn't huge on this song at first, but it did grow on me in the context of the album as a whole. That being said, at four minutes, it already is starting to overstay its welcome just a little bit. That's kind of the problem with the album as a whole, and that's a problem that I've had with pretty much every Slipknot album, is that they really need an editor. They need somebody to say, cut this, cut this, these are your best ideas. And that's the case here once again. And hey, if they'd done that, they maybe could have included the standalone single from which they got the album title, all Out Life, which yeah, it fucking rips. All right, all right, all right. So remember how I said I was going to talk about how Corey said it was their best since volume three? Yeah, time, time for me to reveal how I really feel about that. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I do think it is their best since volume three. Though the releases that came out between that one and this one have had moments of greatness, their opening trilogies, consistency and vibe has not yet been matched. Well, the last album, excited me at first and quickly faded. This one excited me a little bit at first and it grew on me as I listened to it more. Though Slipknot have steadily toned down the get-ups that they wear on stage, you know, they used to wear bright red jumpsuits, then they went to black and now they're white and they had some other colors sprinkled in between there. Their music has not toned down. If anything, what you hear on this album is representative of that kaleidoscope that they've worn on stage throughout their entire career. It, it's all over the place. And beyond that, They've produced some definite bangers for their legendary live show. And for that reason, I'm giving We Are Not Your Kind three and a half skulls out of five. Shout out, Shout out time. time. First up, I've got a local Toronto band called Sparrows and their album Failed Gods, which is out on Sound Anxiety. I actually just did doors for one of their shows and they were selling earplugs with the sign like, hey, it's gonna get loud in here. You should probably buy earplugs, which gives you the gist of how loud they are. It's kind of like, Cave In meets Norma Jean meets Deftones. It's spacey, it's loud, it's heavy, it's emotional. You get the point, go listen to it. And you should check out the new album by Lord Gore, Scalpels for Blind Surgeons, out now on Everlasting Spew. It's like, you know, old school death grind with a punky edge featuring members of bands that you might recognize, such as Ascended Dead, Engorged, Ritual Necromancy, Blood Freak, and like way more. They're from Portland, which is a beautiful city, but this music is ugly. So I've given you my shout outs. I've told you what I think about the Slipknot album. Now it's your turn to weigh in. 
Do you think Corey's insane for saying it's as heavy as Iowa? Do you think Corey's insane for saying it's their best since Volume 3? Would you go even further and say that it's their best since Iowa, their best since their debut, or even their best ever? I want to hear what you have to say, because every time Slipknot put out, puts out an album, it is an event, and we should all take part in it. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure it's going to be a fucking clusterfuck. I'll wear my mask. Oh, 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 oh.